There are some places you go in life, some experiences that you have, where you know coming out of it that you are not the same person who went in. They've left a thumbprint on your heart so deep and so meaningful that you're a better person somehow. For me, French Polynesia was one of those places. Getting ready, sorting through this epic mess here <laughs> to get out and swim with the whales. So every morning we have breakfast here at like seven and then we head out to try to be on the boat by eight, but we're never on time, but we try. <laughs> and it's from breakfast. All right, off we go. All right, it's very bright. I can't see you, but hopefully you can see me. <laughs> Time to go find some whales. And all of this would have been wonderful. The glittering blue Pacific, the sunlight shining down, but the real moment that changed everything for me was locking eyes with a humpback whale. It's hard to put what swimming with whales is like into words. They're so big and yet so aware of their bodies in a way that I am not even aware of my own body. The way that they move through the water is so careful and so thought out, knowing that we mere humans are right there. And the whole time, they're watching you. And they could just easily swim away, but they don't. They come back and they keep playing. I got in the water seven times throughout the week, and there were three times when I swam with the same pot of whales for over an hour. They just kept coming back around and around, playing, diving deep and then swimming up. And it was just amazing to me that of all the other things that they could be doing, they chose to be there with us. This humbling experience with this gentle giant has changed me forever. And now I can't imagine who I would be had I never had this experience. That was uh, about as great as it gets. We were dancing with a bunch of whales and super spiritual experience. Uh, very humbling. Probably the coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been to a place where people treated me like they knew me when they didn't. Where it seems like the culture is preserved as though stuck in time, but in the most beautiful way. Because the people who live there have made the conscious effort to keep it so. Today we're going around the island with Mama, who's like the matriarch of the family who we've been staying with, eating all our meals with. Um, her daughter is the captain of our boat, the first and only female boat captain in French Polynesia. Super cool. And it just feels like you are part of the family, like really genuinely part of the family right away. And the whole island feels this way. So super welcoming and friendly. And this is a little adventure we're having today before we see the whales later. So crazy lush here, there's just like bananas. Bananas growing right there above me and flowers that are seriously above my head. Hang on. Here's one that's my my height, but like this is towering above me and it's flowers and I'm surrounded by banana trees. It's look at this. So incredibly lush here. Look how tiny everyone is compared to these plants. Je m'appelle Madame Tabita Giselle, je fais le tour de l'île, je raconte l'histoire et je suis née ici à Rurutu. Uh, my name is Madame Giselle Tabita. Tabita is a family name. She is uh, guiding us here around this island on this tour to understand the history and the stories from. And she was born and raised here in. 
So this is a pretty significant cave. Every January they have a big party here, but if and only if the youth of the village can lift this giant 250 pound stone and everyone has to be able to do it. So they have to call on their strength and fortitude and all of the strength that they get from the land, the sea and the air in order to be able to do this. So it's a pretty big deal. It's like what the biggest party they have on this island and this cave is major and represents a lot to them in their history. Stone. But you have to channel the energy of the stone. Channel the energy of the stone first. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. That looks so heavy. Watch your foot. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Got it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, watch your foot. Watch your foot. Good work. Woohoo! Nicely done. Yeah. Now we can throw a party. Party tonight? Yes. <laughs> When you're there, you're staying with families, and they treat you like family. Everything you eat is fresh out of the sea or the farm, truly farm to table. Ooh, nice. That looks so beautiful. I can use the soup for the fish. Perfect, thank you. So bright and colorful. That's a pretty generous portion there. Now you're really living the dream. <laughs> uh, we are going to hike to the top of the highest peak in I have an old iPhone, so we can drone from the top. Sweet is. We don't know the name of the mountain, but we'll find out. This is my friend who I always um, swim with whales with. <laughs> Video too. Yes. <laughs> Look at these leaves. That's that's a big leaf. Left the boys in the dust. You can't even see them back there. <laughs> Power of the unicorn hat. Woo! <laughs> It is definitely gorgeous. <laughs> wow. I love that there are pine trees here. I know. Nice little midway view. Just watch those power lines when drawing. Yeah, sounds good. Those things eat drones. They do. We made it. We did extra credit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the moon behind you. That's cool. I know that in the years to come, I'm going to look back on this time in French Polynesia with so much love and appreciation, not just for the amazing experiences I got to have with the animals in the water here, but for the people, for the people who welcomed me into their homes, who fed me what they eat, who took me around and showed me their way of life, who welcomed me with open arms. And I could tell that they really meant it, and that was beautiful. Thank you.